Hi, I am Dr. Sridhar Kalyana Sundaram. In this uh, quick video, I will be discussing how we can approach a sudden episode of apnea in a baby who is otherwise stable, a feeder and grower so to speak. So you are doing your rounds and the nurse tells you that the baby has had two to three episodes of apnea with desaturation in the past two hours. You review the baby's chart. The baby has been on caffeine and normal dose which has been increased for the weight of the baby. Baby was otherwise healthy, is just reached full uh, feeds and we were moving from two hourly to three hourly feeds. So how would you approach this baby and what are the possible reasons for this apnea and desaturation? So as you rightly think, you have to assess the baby's clinical condition. So baby is a little floppy and these episodes have happened quickly in the past hour. Baby is on high flow nasal cannula weaning at 3 liters and baby is in, uh, was in room air but now the nurse has increased the FAO to 2.25. So there is no real risk of infection, the baby did not have any recent lines, did not have any procedures recently and has been on breast milk with human milk fortifier. So if this baby was clinically unwell, you have to immediately do a septic screen, you have to support the breathing further. In any case where the apnea is on a recurrent basis, the lung volume is de-recruited. So obviously you have to re-recruit the lung volume because as long as FRC is low, the baby is hypoxic relatively during expiratory phase especially and you know that the premature babies may have a hypoxic response. They hold their breathing or they go apneic as a response to hypoxia which is a paradox in the premature babies. So this immature response starts coming in once the hypoxia starts and the limpness of the baby immediately after apneic episodes or the slightly pale looking baby immediately after the apneic episode is related to the hypoxia as well because when the hypoxia is recurrent the brain uh, hypoxia sets in and the baby becomes a little floppy so the first step is to increase the respiratory support to recruit the lung if you are on a high flow of 3 liters you can make it 6 liters and you may be able to wean down quickly once these apneic episodes reduce if you are on CPAP you can increase the pressure by 1 to 2 cm and if the increase on high flow doesn't help you may put the baby on CPAP as well uh, there is no harm in looking at the septic parameters but if this happens on a repeated basis the other thing that has happened in this baby is moving from 2 hourly to 3 hourly feeds and even though the relationship of reflux and apnea is not clear cut increasing the volume of the feed in the stomach is going to increase the risk of physiologic reflux so reflux does happen in premature babies it's just that the short foot pipe the stomach uh, gets distended quite easily the baby is squirming can put pressure on the stomach the gas flow through the high floor CPAP is going to bubble through the stomach and increase the risk of reflux as well and we know that reflex laryngospasm happens when the milk uh, droplets come to the airway so the baby holds the breath so moving from the two to three hourly feeds might have triggered this as well and you may reverse back for two three days till this recruitment sets in the, you you can just wait for that period if the infection screen is normal if the hemoglobin is normal again don't rush to transfuse such babies if they don't meet the threshold you can do a infection screen after two three hours if the baby looks clinically not too bad you can wait for the re-recruitment of the lung assess the baby again uh, you can still do a septic screen if the baby looks unwell but if the baby is not improving quickly after you recruit the lung i would rather do a screen rather than this infection and remember late onset uh, infection can also be urinary tract infection so you do need a urine routine and culture like in any other case of urinary tract don't rely on bag urine if you're taking a culture uh, urine analysis can be done on a bag sample but a culture also always has to be a clean catch catheterized sample or a suprapubic puncture so clean catch is usually difficult in an icu unless the nurse is a really patient so you may decide to catheterize such babies if there is a rise in the inflammatory markers and so on so uh, this is a quick example of how you can approach a clinical problem during the bedside checking i hope this is helpful and please do share this information one thing i would tell you here is the nurses are very committed they know exactly what they are doing so this practice of increasing the flow to re-recruit the lungs can be taught to the nurses so this can happen after suctioning for example this can happen after a mild reflex episode so if the baby has two or three episodes rather than waiting for the doctor to come and review the nurse can be empowered to increase the flow briefly to re-recruit and uh, call the doctor to assess in the meantime 
you don't need an x-ray for such babies as well so do review no need for a gas no need for an x-ray consider a septic workup if it's on a recurrent pattern even after you re-recruit the lungs and the first thing is to look into why it happened and to support the lungs to get back the frc please uh, share this thank you